I, I'm going to guess you all know who I am, so uh, since there's nobody here to introduce me. Hi, I'm Sharon Presley. And the hat I'm wearing now is uh, as a representative of Resources for Independent Thinking, which is a, a nonprofit educational group that specializes in critical and independent thinking. But let me ask, is this being videotaped? Yes, it is. Okay. So, as I said, there's no way I can do a whole critical thinking course in 45 minutes. And I have, I had used to teach critical thinking when I was a professor at Cal State East Bay. So, would one of you take the responsibility for handing these two handouts when somebody new comes in? So, but, so what I've decided to do is concentrate on some areas of critical thinking that I think libertarians in general tend to be a little weak in. And there's so much more. If I had several hours, I could go over a whole lot more stuff. But that's what the handout is about that says resources for critical thinking. A few more places. And I prepared uh, some stuff that I put on the RIT website. So you can go there for some further information. But what I'd like you to do now is take this quiz. Now, I, the, you're not turning in the test, okay? So be uh, as honest as you can. This is for you, not for me. I don't care what you say. And there are 10 questions, so we'll let you read these. I'm going to go ahead and read it for the camera. Uh, you can be answering these. And first, oh, yeah. and what you do, since I'm a psychologist, I have I have the typical five-point Likert scale, it's called. From strongly agree, agree, uncertain in the middle, disagree, or strongly disagree. And you're going to answer these, and then I'll tell you how to score them, and we'll move on from there. The first question, when it comes to important social issues, I like to read all sides of the issue before I make up my mind. So you answer that. Uh, from strongly agree to strongly disagree, where, where do you fall in that five-point scale? And don't worry about getting it exactly right. These things are never easy to answer. That's not the point. It's just to get provide a background for what I want to talk about. Okay, I'm going to read the first five, and then I'll let you work on them, and then I'll read the second five. Um, the second one says, I tend to react negatively to politically correct statements from leftists and don't necessarily think about whether they have a point, okay? Third, I often read leftist, liberal, and conservative writings or publications to get another point of view. The fourth one is, I tend to go along with the analyses of libertarian writers I agree with on current social issues and don't generally read other different points of view on the subject. Five, I tend to pick the politically incorrect position on controversial social issues rather than the politically correct. So go ahead and quickly answer those five um, where you might fall on the scale. Again, don't worry about it. We're, we're not testing, we're not doing research, so just give a quick answer. And so that we don't have vi vi dead air for the videotape, I'm going to be making a few comments. But you go ahead and when you're finished, kind of like wave your hand so I know you can go on. Um, one of the things that I've seen in the libertarian movement, I, I, let me take it back, that I see in general in political movements or even on social issues is people tend to only read their own side. And that's what part of this is about. Okay, anybody not finished with the first five? Okay, let's move on to the, uh, the next group. Sometimes I become defensive and irritated when someone confronts me with a good argument against one of my positions. Number seven. I'm willing to admit I make mistakes when I realize that I've taken a position without thinking it through. Number eight, I have a need to be top dog and win every argument. 
Number nine, I'm pretty good at spotting legal, uh, logical fallacies in my own arguments. And ten, I try to gather objective research evidence before I make up my mind about complex issues. Okay, so answer that on the scale, and then I'll tell you how to score it. Has everybody got a handout and hopefully participating? Anybody need a pen or anything? Because okay. this is a workshop. Um, we're we've just answered. Um, we're doing this little quiz, and uh, so for those of you who came in late, just come and read over what's there, and don't worry about it if you can't answer. This is just an exercise. <clears throat> I think you can kind of see where I'm going with this. When you finish, but I would like to start with the quiz and then I'm going to talk about critical thinking. Okay, anybody need more time? All right, let's move on because you've got more work to do. Like I said, this is a participatory workshop. Let's have the next. This is how to score it. And that, okay, for, so, just for questions number one, three, seven, nine, and ten, give yourself five points for every strongly agree answer, four for every agree, three for every uncertain, two for every disagree, and one for strongly disagree. And then for questions two, four, five, six, and eight, you reverse it. Everybody clear on how that scoring works? So just do the first group at, at one time. What was uh, one? Like I know three was always you. Okay, just a moment. Let me There's let one. me look at my version. Um, Essay or message? Yeah, number one was. I what? just mean the, um, the answer one versus the answer five. One's essay, one's essay. Yeah, one is essay, two. Yeah. Three. 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 Okay. Because. With, in psychology, you never word everything in the same direction. We have to go back and forth. That's the way it works. Does anybody need a handout? If you do, wave your hand. And this is just an exercise. This is not engraved in stone. But I, I, will, I would like to get people thinking about these things by participating, not by just passively sitting. You do not become a critical thinker by sitting passively listening to someone tell you what to do, okay? You gotta participate. Okay, does anybody need more time? And if you hear, yeah, I know you came a little late, it's tough. It turned out the screens were smaller than I was expecting. Okay. We're doing participatory, so if we could have those handouts. If you don't have paper, you can write in the back of the We've kind of gone through the first exercise, but there'll be more. Okay. Now, I hope you answered it honestly, because that's the way you learn. And you're not being tested on this. I'm not going to ask for your answers, okay? <laughs> These are just for you, for your benefit. Okay. And if you didn't get all the questions, no big deal, okay? Like I said, you're not turning this in. Um, and I do have a copy of the questions that you can look at later. Okay, let's. Anybody need more time? Let's move on to this next point. What he, I want to start off with what critical thinking is not. A lot of people think critical thinking is about learning how to knock holes in somebody else's argument. Well, yes, a lot of critical thinking does deal with how to evaluate other people's arguments, but there's more to it than that. It's not about patting yourself on the back for your superior arguments while excoriating others' inferior arguments. You've all seen the type, I'm sure. 
And probably if you're at this workshop, you're not like that. Because the people who are like that don't come to critical thinking workshops. Okay, but I feel I need to say that anyway. It's not about beating your opponent over the head with the brilliance of your argument and not listening to what they have to say. It's not about assuming that because your cause is righteous and your principles are sound, that you are right on every position. Do we all know the kind of person I'm talking about? Okay, but what is critical thinking? Let's move that up. Here are two definitions that I used in my classes when I taught critical thinking. Um, and both of them are from critical thinking books. Consciously observing, analyzing, reasoning, and evaluating according to a standard. That's one definition. The one I like the best, though, is by two psychologists, Carol Wade and Carol Tavris. They say the ability and willingness to assess claims and make objective judgments on the basis of well-supported reasons. It is the ability to look for flaws in arguments and resist claims that have no supporting evidence. Critical thinking, however, is not merely negative thinking. It also fo fosters the ability to be creative and constructive, to generate possible explanations of things, think of implications, and apply new knowledge to a broad range of social and personal problems. That's my favorite definition of critical thinking. And this is from a, li a very slim book, but it's full of really good stuff. And I recommend, if you can find a used copy on Amazon, that it's well worth reading. OK. Now, the next thing well, we're going to look at, what does it take to be a libertarian critical thinker? Now, these guidelines that I picked up are actually based on a, a critical thinking book by Vincent Ruggiero, and he is listed as one of the recommended books on the list that I gave you. So this isn't merely my own personal idea. This is from a critical thinking textbook. And here is where we're going to make you work. If you want to get some of now again, I, you know, if you don't want to do it, hey, we're libertarians, you can make that choice. But again, this is a workshop, and, we, and the best way you're going to get the most out of it is if you think about it. Okay, so I've based these, uh, this list on Rodario's uh, guidelines to what it takes to be a critical thinker. Obviously, he wasn't talking about libertarians, but they, these guidelines work for everybody. I'm going to use some libertarian examples to illustrate my point. First thing, libertarian critical thinkers are honest with themselves, acknowledging what they don't know, and recognizing the limitations of their knowledge. I personally think that many libertarians are a little weak on this. Well, actually, I think lots of people are a little weak, not, not libertarians especially, but including libertarians. Because it's just real easy to spout off your mouth and talk about things, and maybe you know something, and maybe you don't. My favorite example, the term feminism. A lot of libertarians are clueless, but that doesn't stop them from spouting off their mouths about it, does it? <laughs> the women all know what I'm talking about. Um, 